Hey guys, and welcome back to Witcher 3 readings, bestiary readings, and I hope you enjoy. Here we go. Insectoids. Armored Archasia. That's the kind of giant we call an armored arches. Hard and prickly on the outside, but get him undressed, and everything's soft and squishy. An archist only weakness is its soft, sensitive abdomen. Some archsaya hide this under a hollow tree stump, while others, armored varieties, exist which have grown a thick carapace that covers all the more delicate parts of their body. Andrega warriors. Scared of these Andregas, are you? Just wait till you see the warriors. Endless waves of Andrega workers are enough to overcome most attackers. But when confronting more dangerous foes, Andrega colonies unleash their larger, stronger members. The so called warriors, this Cass lives only to fight and gets an ample opportunity to do so while defending the colony's borders or conquering new territory. And Drega workers. I thought the workers were harmless. I thought wrong. Jane the Gimp Trapper. Workers are the most numerous and thus the most frequently encountered. Cast of Andrega. Within the colony, their duty lies in building nests and the cocoons, acquiring food and caring for eggs and larvae. When threatened, they will summon warriors to aid them, yet if forced to defend themselves, they will and do so surprisingly well. Heresy. Heresy. It attacked us, gods. I don't, I don't know. What it were, but twere at least four spans high. Valen peasant woman. Valen, woods and bogs brim with monsters. This fact is well known, and thus, when the war drove refugees into the hostile land, certain of certain of their number thought to avoid the dangers of the lowlands by hiding in an abandoned mine they were in for, in for a, an unfortunate surprise the shaft they chose for their sanctuary was inhabited by poisonous arachnids a uh, merciless and bloodthirsty monster the witcher knew he was in for a, a tough fight the arachnids had dwelled in the mine for years and had grown large and particularly strong and resilient in the, that time. Like other members of its vile species, it would be dangerous both at close quarters and at, dis at a distance. What's more, is, more, it was almost certainly venomous. He would need to imb imbibe a swallow or a golden Oriole or both before attacking if he was to stand a chance of surviving if he was a ch if he was able to stand a chance of surviving as a small consolation the witcher knew the monster would be vulnerable to his signs especially Igni Ard and Erdin as well as the northern wide wind bomb the Witcher arrived at the cave too late to save the refugees, but he could still avenge their fate. He slew the powerful Arachnus and destroyed the eggs bearing the, its vile offspring. Venomous Archasia. Barely nicked me. I'll be fine. Last words of an unknown hunter. Though an Ar Arc. Chasia are highly venomous. This breed pro produced an especially strong toxin. A few drops are enough to 
kill a grown man unless that man is a witcher whose mutations will neutralize small amounts of the venom. Large quantities, however, will kill anything they touch with mutations only prolonging the inevitable and painful death in such instances. Necrophages. Abaya. Seen a lot of ugly critters in my life. Morals, lampreys, blob flesh, but never nothing like this. The bay below care trolled had a per pernicious reputation. At times, fishermen who chose to cast their nets in its waters would uh, never come home again. Something would drag oarsmen off their longships or knock the ships themselves over. The locals blamed this on the ocean devils. The Skelligers named the drown named for drowners. The Skelligers named for drowners. The truth, however, proved far worse. A water hag made her lair in the caver caves beneath the cliffs of Carl Dra Drag uh, I can pronounce this shit. Jarag. I'm just gonna say that. An old and ex experienced water hag with powerful claws able to demolish any attempt to block or parry. And the ability to blind opponents from the, a distance, then strike with a lightning quick counterattack. Signs would be needed to best her, yearning to slow her, Ken to protect from her blows, needed most of all, however, would be a great deal of luck. The Witcher, though, never was one to count on luck alone. Instead, by he, instead he pulled a few tricks from up his sleeve to even the odds. By mis masking his scent, he managed to catch the monster by surprise and slit. Al Ghouls. An Al Ghoul is basically a bad about our school. An owl ghoul differ from normal ghouls in size, strength, and coloring, and most unimportantly, importantly, intelligence. Whereas ghouls and grave gravers are primitive creatures until to plan yeah, in primitive what is that say? Uh, sorry, my, my vision is bad. Primitive creatures unfit to plan even the simplest ambush all ghouls and their kin kindred, such as centaurs, are capable of forethought and are th thus much more dangerous. Drowners. I hate these fuckers. When at the water edge, you gotta be quiet. First of all, so as not to scare the fish. Secondly, so you don't attract drowners. A drowner resembles a corpse dragged from the bottom of a pond. It is strictly blue or green in a color with slime and sludge oozing out of every pore. And the acid stench, the acrid stench of a rot warting off of it, rot warting, warfing off of it. That is why it is often through often thought drowners, along with their more dangerous cousins, Vognids, Nix, Mock Nixers, and Drowned Dead, arise from the bodies of those who drown in the shallow, shallow waters. Lost travelers falling into bogs, children who swim too far from shore, or in the case of Vognids, in abbreviated presents who stumble off narrow swamp trails. Foglets. If night ever catches you in the swamp, if, wait, if, night, if night ever catches you in the swamp, swamps, stay put and wait for dawn, even if it means standing waist deep in water with leeches crawling down your trousers. Most important of all, if you see a light in the fog, never and 
I mean never go towards it. John Strud Guide Fog is the traveler's foe in the forest. It can make one lose one's way. At sea, it can send one sailing into rocks, yet such dangers are nothing compared to the monsters known as foglets, which sometimes lurk within it. These creatures have powerful arms and claws like Zircanians, Kenjols, Zircanian Kenjols. Yet, what makes them truly dangerous is their mastery of deception, buglements, and dis. Oh, shoot. Let me get closer. Disorientation. Many times they need not attack at all, instead simply driving their prey to madness or into boggy marshlands after which they wait patiently for it to drown in the muddy, wa in the muddy waters. Ghouls. Ghouls creep and crawl at night, eating everything in sight. In a snap they'd eat you too, chop you up for a ghoulish stew. Children drive. Ghouls and gravers are hard to describe in part. They resemble humans, yet on a whole, they are the utter negation of all that is human. Though they have arms and legs like man, they walk on all fours like dogs and or badgers. Though they have early familiar faces. One searches them in vain for any sight, sign of sentiment, reason, or even a spark of consciousness. They are driven by one thing and one thing only, an insensationable craving for human flesh. Grave hags. Craven. Now that's one thing men could learn from gnomes. Buying bodies out of burying bodies out of out in the fields. Why it's like laying out a welcome mat for monsters. Best cast best case scenario, some ghouls will sniff them out, eat their fill, and be on their ghoulish way. But if God forbid a grave hag takes a feeding Take the feeding at your cemetery, you'll have no end of trouble. Takes the feeding at your cemetery, you'll have no trouble. Um, excuse me. Few monsters name fit as well as the grave hags. As one fight might, might guess these creatures resemble aged, deformed women and loiter near, loiter near graveyards and battlefields. Grave hags feed on human corpses and in particular on the rotting marrow which they slurp from human bones using their long prehensile, prehensile tongues. Once a hag has devoured all corpses within reach, she turns to killing men and burying them in the cemetery as she waits for them to decompose. Ignis Fatus. Careful, sir. A monster prowls the bog. Enter the mist and you'll never see home again. Laszlo Peat Digger. The monster haunting the peat bogs of Valen turned out to be an ancient foglet. These are extraordinarily long lived creatures. Some have even dwelt. On, the earth, on this earth for over 200 years, growing stronger and stronger all the while. Blows dealt by foglets of such an age carry so much power, blocking them is out of the question. These foglets possess the ability to move extremely quickly and not even the Eden can slow them. Slow them down. Furthermore, they can meld completely into the mist, and then suddenly re, re materialize to strike from behind, wearing heavy armor 
or making good use of Quinn is highly recommended. This ancient foglet proved particularly adept in the art of forming illusions. Only a professional monster slayer skilled with signs and swords could vest such a foe. Luckily, Garrett fit the description perfectly. See how many more left? Okay, yeah. Morn Tart. Somebody doing some cooking. This is this. It's human form femur, a child's girl of Rivia. Oh, I remember this one. I fought her in the cemetery. Most excuse me. Most grave hags rarely attack humans. Preferring instead to feed on the rotten remains they dig out of the graves. Yet some individuals grow bold over the years and begin to begin sneaking into huts and steal children and kill the elderly. Just such monster was tormenting the inhabitants of Lindenvale. Lindenvale. The witcher knew this grave hag would put up a fierce fight. He would have to watch out for her powerful claws. Capable of smashing through and blocking a parry and her long venomous tongue, he also realized her attacks would be so quick not even his mutated reflexes would be able to keep up, keep pace, meaning only judici just judicious use of the Eden sign would all would all him to survive the conquer and conquer. The outcome of this fight was not hard to predict. The grave had perished in the very graveyard which had her heretofore served as her feeding grounds and her body was dumped in the grave she had dug with her, her own claws. Rot fiends, these guys are ugly. I don't like these guys. Rot fiends, corset reeks. Think they're called rot fiends for because they smell like roses? Vesemir, Witcher of the Wolf School. Rot fiends resemble decomposing human bodies that have been stripped of their skin. Their presence is given away by the overwhelming stench of rot, which gives them their name. Devourers are a particularly dangerous kind of rot fiend marked by the insatiable appetite for human flesh. Water hags. Folks say water hags are drowners' wives. If that be true, taint no wonder wh why they're such ornery bitches. Some tales mention water hags and swamp vents masquerading as lost old women to lure travelers back to the wrigley shacks they build in the wetlands in truth only a blind man or a sighted a or a sighted man blinded with drunk drink could mistaken the rank sludged and rotting carrying of a water hag den for a cozy cottage and the hideous hag herself for an innocent grandmother. Their wrinkled, wart-covered bodies stand nearly two yards tall, with skin and the color of the long-dead cadaver, cadaver, and stinking of muck and fish. Bony growths, two spans long, stick out with their backs, with hair like a tangled of seaweed and the claws that would make a werewolf proud completing the picture. 